So today we're going to talk about stock market investing. Um, we're going to talk about the basics, the steps, and the things that you need to understand, especially the fundamentals and tec technicals. Right? Um, so, what is stock market? Stock market is a place where people buy and sell shares of public publicly listed companies. So basically, it's like palengke. But what you buy here is the share yung or yung stock ng company na listed sa Philippine Stock Exchange. It is actually our national stock exchange in the Philippines. So here are the examples of pub publicly listed companies. Andiyan yung SM, Metrobank, Globe, Ayala. So hindi lahat ng companies dito sa Philippines um nakalist sa stock exchange natin. And there are certain requirements na kailangan nilang i-comply to be listed. So, bakit ba nag ano, bakit ba nagiging publicly listed company ang <clears throat> isang company? Basically, they need more capital to expand their business. That's why and um also to pay their debts to basically work on their businesses. So, here are the two types of market. Um bull market and bear market. Basically, ito yung trend na nangyayari sa stock market. Bull market, ito yung lahat ng stocks umaangat ng price, umaangat yung value. Basically, I mean, hindi man lahat, but karamihan, um, kung alam niyo yung PSE index, um, may kita niyo doon na pagpata siya na nasa bull market na tayo. At yung opposite naman niya ay yung bear market. So, right now, na, nasa COVID-19 pandemic tayo, nasa bear market tayo ngayon. By the way, guys, um, for you can do uh, screenshots or take down notes. Um, at the end, magana tayo. Question and answer. So, prepare your questions and I will try to answer it to give you more better under, better understanding so yeah so what is a share share or stock is a part of ownership of a company so basically kapag bumili ka ng stock ng Ayala or ng Metro Bank part ka na ng business nila kapag kumita sila kumikita ka din at kung hindi naman hindi rin so ayun na uh, that's why it's really important to choose your stock properly na hindi porket gusto mo mag-invest sa stock market eh kung ano-ano na lang yung stock na bibili mo. Hindi ganun yun. Okay? So, what is a stock portfolio? Stock portfolio is actually a collection of stocks. Dito mo may kita yung position mo or kung ano yung stock na binili mo at what price at ano yung current price niya ngayon. At saka nandun din yung total equity mo or yung total investment. Stock market investing. Ano bang stock market investing? Stock market investing is actually putting your money in the stock market to build your portfolio or collection of stocks to grow your wealth in the long term. It is actually also a form of saving, pero pinapalago mo siya. Hindi yung, unlike sa bank na whenever you want it, na makuha mo siya. Sa stock market, um, you have to stay consistent. It's going to be a long, long road and that's why you should not put all your money on it. Stock market investing is like planting a seed. So, pag nag-plant tayo ng seed, hindi naman natin ito hina-harvest on the next day, di ba? Hindi naman ito yung quick, yung get rich quick or whatever na mabilisan. It's going to be a long road nga and it takes time. That's why if you're the younger you started, the better. So, it is different from stock trading. Sa stock market, there are investors and there's also traders. Sa stock market, ang mga traders kasi, they buy and sell shares in the short term. So basically, they buy today or they sell on the next day or the next month in the, or on the same day then. But in investing, it is complete different scenario. Sa investing, mas kailangan mo ng time. Pag sa traders kasi, Yun, na they are also known as short-term traders while investors are also known as long-term investors. Ang mga traders nakadepende sa volatility ng market. Pero ang time investors, we don't care about it. 
we don't care kung bumili yung binili nating stock bumaba siya ngayon or tumas next week because ang horizon natin is mahaba and hindi tayo ganong affected sa volatility ng market also traders spend time and effort in understanding the market and technical analysis Invest, pag si investors naman ang pinaka importante dito yung fundamentals at si investor um they based on the real value of the company samantalang yung mga traders na depende sila sa price action or price movement ng isang company so why do you need to invest in stock market number one you need to beat inflation to reach your financial faster to improve your money habits to leverage time also to bless the people around you kasi maybe sa inyo may ano meron na yung experience na yung mag save ng money to buy something pero when you actually invest when you have a long term goal it is much faster to reach that goal when you invest than saving your money also in nga na improve yung money habits mo kasi mas pag yung focus ka sa pagpapalago ng wealth mo ng ng pera mo hindi mo siya hindi mo siya sasayangin may realize mo na it's better to put it in something na mas mag-grow pa in the long term also to use your time lalo na mas bata ka pa you have more opportunity and pag yung nag-invest ka na rin kasi i-share mo din siya sa paligid mo sa kamag-ana mo sa kaibigan mo kung ano yung nilalaman mo So here's an example of inflation. So dynamic yung sa cigarette kasi sobrang basic siya. Um nalalo kasi 2008 I was 13 years old pag inutusan ako ng cigarillo. First thing it's around 2 pesos lang. So by 2013 college na ako niyan. Uh, pag gumigimik kami yung mga friends ko pag bumili na sa 5 pesos na first thing. At ngayon 2020 na sa 8 pesos na. Just take a look at that nung 10 years ago lang, yung 8 pesos mo, four sticks of cigarettes yung mabibili mo. But right now 2020, isa na lang. So that how inflation works. So kung hindi ka magi-invest, yung inflation kakainin niya lang yung iniipon mong pera. So you're still at risk. If there's risk in investing, there's more risk when you don't invest. Kasi inflation is like a you know, parang little monster inside the bank. At magkano lang ba yung interest na nakuha natin sa bank? Wala pang 1%. Around 0.25%. Okay? Yan. So, if you only save your long-term plan in the bank, it will be eaten by inflation over time. Dahil ang inflation natin, by the way, nasa, on average, nasa 3% siya every year. So, how to earn from stock market? Paano ba tayo kikita sa stock market? There's actually two ways to earn from the stock market. Number one is capital appreci appreciation. Um, for example, um, you decided to buy a car at 120,000 pesos. And then on the next month, binenta mo siya. Around 150,000 pesos. That's actually capital appreciation. Kasi dun sa 120,000 pe 120, pesos mo, kumita ka ng 30,000 for selling it at 150. So you're buying something and selling it for a higher price. And the, number two, yung dividends. Dividend is actually a excess earning of a company. That's why it's also important to choose the company na nagbabay ng dividends. Kasi ibig sabihin, profitable sila. Na yung excess na kita nila, sinishare nila sa mga investors. So ayun yan. So here are the steps. Um, basically, this is what I do. And... Not all investors follow this one because I believe every investor has its own personality, how to invest in the stock market. And this is what I would like to share with you because this is what I practice. You need to have a long-term plan. You need to have a long-term projection. Meaning, you need to define your financial goals first, your long-term financial goals. If you're 20 today, ano yung gusto mong makit in the next decade? Ano yung gusto mong na lugar. Do you like to travel or do you want to buy a house? Um, any financial goal na pang matagalan siya. Not in the short term. It's different. Also, ang pag-invest kasi hindi lang siya yung pagpapalago ng pera. 
because you have a financial goal, long-term financial goal. Ito, I just would like to share with you guys na madami sa Facebook groups ang nagpo-post ng portfolio nila. May kita ba doon their, their portfolio battered down, sobrang pula, negative. Why? It is because they just want to earn in the stock market. Wala namang masama kumita sa stock market and that's why pinag-aakalan natin yun, no? Ang ba't ang problema lang? Pag ang gusto mo lang kumita sa stock market, ito ang problema. Maliligaw ka. Hindi kasi ang, yun nga, ang stock market, it goes up and down in a short amount of time. At kung yung goal mo, yung goal mo, kumita lang, maliligaw ka na kasi hindi mo alam kung saan ka papunta, wala kang goal na nire-reach. But if you're someone who has a long-term goal, let's say, kagano yun, bagsak market natin, mababa yung position mo, focused ka, you're, you're, you will think na, I'm not yet on my goal. Next year pa yun. Ten, I mean, next 10 years pa yun. So, I'll be fine. I will keep my position. So, ayun, na, if you already define your financial goal, it will keep you on track. Ayun. Uh, also, and yun, also, yun nga, na, you have at least 10 years time of investing. So, eto, yung 10 years na to, hindi naman siya yung, ano lang to, pahang allowance lang for long-term investing. Uh, hindi, hindi naman porket 10 years in time mo, eh, kompletoin mo na siya. Kasi there are times na maybe next year makabawi na tayo, umangit yung investments natin. That's when you sell. Okay? And we'll talk about that more. Kung kailan tayo dapat mag-sell. Pero yun nga, dapat yun yung duration mo, duration mo. And I will explain further. Kasi having longer time horizon in this market, in the stock market, helps you lessen the risk of volatility. So here the chart, the PSEI index. So this from the 2008 to 2018. If you look at it, it's actually 10 years time. At kung saan man pumunta yung market, kung titig mo in the bigger picture, pataas pa rin siya. Nag-start siya at a 2000 level and then nung pagdating ng 2018, umabot siya ng 9,000 level. And in Philippine growth history, ito yung pinamataas. Seeing the day-to-day -day changes in the stock market is just a looking at the small piece of the jigsaw puzzle. You need to see the bigger picture. Kagaya nga kung pinapro... Kung long-term investor ka at pinaproblema mo yung day-to-day -day changes, you should not look at it sa ganun lang. You need to see the bigger picture na kahit bumaba o tumaas man yun with market, in the long term, you still have gains. So, ito yung top 10 stocks from 2009 to 2019. Ayan, GG Summit. So, ayan. If you'd see, if you invest 10,000 in the two ta last 2009, Pagdating ng 2019, yung, yung investment mo sa JG Summit would grow at 328,000. So, may kita ng GP yan. Yung growth at 3,000%. So, step two. You need to invest portion of your income regularly. So, hindi ito yung one-time investing lang. Also, only invest the money you won't touch in the next five, in the next 10 years. Dapat willing ka hindi to galawin willing ka na palagoyin pa ito ng mas mahabang panahon. And of course, you need to invest consistently. Invest small amounts lang. Invest even in times of crisis. Bakit kailangan mababa lang? Let's say, 2,000 per month, 3,000, or whatever. Kasi if you have 100,000 and in-invest mo yun ng one time sa isang stock, if it goes down by 10%, down ka na kagad ng 10,000. So, basically, yun nga na the market goes up and down. So, if you have huge amount of money, dapat dahan-dahan lang. So, basically, yung position mo, nag average where the market goes. Especially if it's going down. Don't put the money you're going to use in the next five years. So, if you're going to buy something the next five years or punctuation fee mo in the next five months, don't, don't put it in the stock market. This is the most important step. Step three, buy good companies only. Taking your stock in the stock market is the key to your success. Why? Because a good stock will make you rich and the bad stock will make you poor. Buying a company's stock is being part of the company, which is, I mentioned kanina, na if they earn nga, you earn, and if they lose, you lose. 
You need to understand the business before you buy the stock. Understand the the business, the business operations, aning nature nila. I mean, kung saan industry sila, kung sa banking ba, technology or property. Paano sila kumikita? sa yung sources ng earnings nila or ng revenue? At kung sino yung mga namamahala sa business na yun. Bakit? Kasi, kagaya ngayon, nasa COVID-19 pandemic tayo, ang daming businesses ang affected, di ba? Ang pinakamalala dito yung airline company. Yung Philippine Airlines is almost getting bankrupt. Bakit? Saan ba nanggagaling yung kita nila? Dahil di ba sa mga sa travel, sa passengers, sa plane tickets. Pero dahil nga walang, merong travel, travel ban ngayon, wala silang operations. So they're losing money. If you understand that, you would avoid buying an airline stock. Di ba? Ito yung, yung fundamental analysis. Ito yung financial ratios or financial statements ng company. You need to know the P.E. ratio or price to, earning, price to earnings ratio. Basically, if the company has a 10 P.E. ratio, ibig sabihin, you need to spend 10 pesos just to earn 1 peso. So, if the P.E. ratio is too high, it means that the company is overvalued. I saw yung Mary Mart. If you're familiar with Mary Mart, mag-IPO siya. Nag-IPO siya. And yung PE ratio niya is around 271. So basically, if you buy Mary Mart sa IPO niya, you're spending 271 pesos just to earn 1 pesos. Okay? At yung book value per share naman, ang ibig sabihin nito, ito yung kapag nag-liquidate na si company, isang company, uh, binayaran niya na lahat ng liabilities niya, niliquidate lahat ng assets niya. So, ang matitira, yung equity, i-divide yun sa outstanding shares. So, if the company's book value is around 50 pesos per share at bumili ka ng stock ng around 80 pesos per share, tapos na bankrupt siya, ang mababalik na lang sa'yo is 50 pesos. Kasi yun na lang yung natira. Pag nag Yun nga, pag, pero extreme na yun. Yung, yun na yung pinakamasaklap. So basically, yung PE ratio, yun yung growth margin natin. At yung book value per share, yun yung margin na, safety margin. And earnings per share, kung ito naman yung, kung yung kinikita per share ng company. So para makuha yung PE ratio, you just divided the stock price divided by the EPS or earnings per share. And also the ROE or the return on equity. Ang ibig sabihin naman nito, kung gaano ka profitable yung business. The higher the ROE, the better. So right now, yung pal nga, chinek ko siya kahapon. Yung ROE niya nasa negative 190 something. Ganun. At yung Cebu Pacific, I think okay-okay naman siya. Nasa, di naman siya nag-negative pero around 1% yung ROE niya. And then, the dividend yield. So, the dividend yield dapat nasa na siya. Mas okay kung nasa 4% to 12%. High dividend yield na yun. So, ayun nga. Ito yung balance sheet. Assets. Composed siya ng <clears throat> assets and liabilities. So, pag binainas mo yung assets and liabilities, yun, yun na yung equity niya. So, yun yung mismong pag-aari ng company. You need to have a set of parameters in choosing a stock. Dapat meron kang ano, meron kang certain conditions kung okay ba siya sa'yo o hindi. So for me, dapat may good track record yan. That's why I'm not fond of IPOs kahit gano'n pa sila kamura. Kasi basically, most of the IPOs are too expensive. Um, you know, that may strong fundamentals. Ibig sabihin, in any crisis, they should be able to survive. And company, yung earnings nila dapat nag-grow din every year. Yan, nagbabayad ng dividends. And good valuations. So, ano ba yung good valuations? Um, nung, kailan ba yun? Last year, yung Metro ba kasi sobrang undervalued. They were earning good every quarter. Pero yung stock price niya, sobrang baba pa rin. So that's a good valuations. 
you need to identify the real value of the company. So, ano ba yung real value ng company? Ito ba yung stock price? Actually, ang stock price, it's actually a perceived value in the market. Madaming factors ang nagde-define kung tataas ba dapat yung stock price or bababa. Buying the company at cheaper price is the last decision should you make. Because any company can be cheap but have no good value. You need to know the real value of the company. Kung mapapansin nyo sa Facebook, ang dami nagpo-post na, you need to buy this cheap na ngayon, you need to buy JFC. Not because mababa siya at undervalued, eh bibilihin mo na. You need to know the, yun nga, yung magsit ka ng parameters mo, you need to know the earnings, the fundamentals. Kasi, you need to know the real value. Yan, also known as intrinsic value. Like I said, the market price does not reflect the real value of the company. It's merely just a perceived value. This is how I determine the real value of the company. I follow the Graham's number formula. So, ano ba yung Graham's number? Ito yung uh, pamamaraan din ni Benjamin Graham. If you know Benjamin Graham, he is the father of value investing. Siya yung mentor ni Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett is the most successful investor in history. Kailang malang i times yung 22.5 sa earning per share times book value per share. And then yung product nun is square root mo, square root mo lang. So yan. At yung intrinsic value. Intrinsic value versus the market value. May kita nyo na if you bought shares here sa mababa, ng dito sa mababa na to ay sorry you're buying the stock at the cheaper price kasi yung stock price niya mas mababa sa real value niya it is always better to position at the bottom rather than at the, at the top so ayan so if you ito naman dito sa overpriced if you buy the stock here mas mahirap kasi binibili mo siya sa kung ano lang yung dapat na value niya parang ano yan eh parang bumili ka ng isang candy na dapat piso lang pero binibili mo na limang piso So, ganun siya. And then, here's the example. So, for example, way bili ka na, nag invest ka na sa stock market. Paano kung yung position mo or yung average price mo is mas mababa dun sa stock price or yung market price? That's when you stop buying. Kasi if the stock is going up, tas mababa yung position mo and you still keep buying, yung earnings mo, madidilute yun. Kasi yung position mo, instead na mababa lang, tumataas pa lalo. So, parang... Walang nangyayari, sumasabay ka lang. It is better to look at another stock to buy, to analyze another stock to buy. Only give up your position when there's a massive change in the fundamentals. And the business is getting obsolete. Ito na yung tinatawag natin na cut loss. So for example, bumaba man yung position natin, tapos may nangyayari dung di maganda sa business. But ito na yung sa mga extreme na hindi maganda. Uh, ito, um, an example ka dito yung Kodak, tsaka yung Nokia. So if you're 90s kid, Kodak was really big. Kodak is actually a blue chip company. Pero ano nangyayari? As time goes by, nagkaroon ng mga digital cameras. cameras. So ano nangyayari? Yung Kodak kasi hindi siya nakasabay doon sa technology. So ano nangyayari? Nabankrap siya. At lalo na yung Nokia. I mean, most of us naman familiar sa nangyayari sa kanya. Nung pagdating ng smartphones, tahang nawala na lang siya, di ba? So, gano, pag nangyayari yung mga bagay na yun, that's when we go out. We cut loss our position. Step four, you need to start with two to three stock. Again, when you get into the stock market, hindi ito yung parang namimili ka lang na technically nasa grocery stores ka at bibili ka ng kung ano nung gusto mong stock. Hindi ganun. Diversification also helps you lessen the risk. So, for example, meron kang ABC stock and XYZ stock. At yung position mo nag-down kay ABC stock ng 15%. Pero kumikita ka naman kay XYZ ng 45%. So basically, yung total investment mo, nag-grow pa rin ng, ng 30%. Di ka lang doon naka-invest sa isang stock. Basically, if you're someone na who has a multiple income stream, ito yung hindi ka nakadepende sa isa lang. So yun yung kasi yung risk kapag isa lang yung stock na binili mo na kapag may nangyari din sa stock na yun, sobrang affected ka. Buong portfolio mo down. Bakit 2-3 stocks lang? Bakit may limitations? You need to avoid over-diversification. So over-diversification kasi, nadidilute din dun yung earnings mo. Here's an example. So again, ABC stocks, XYZ stock, at dinagdag natin dito yung QWE and ASD. Ganun din, same scenario. Pero kung kumuha ka pa ng dalawang stock, who is not performing really well. So basically, yung 30% gain mo kanina, naging 10% na lang because of two, two stocks na bumaba ng 10%. So ganun siya. Especially if you're starting with small amounts, 
it is not okay to keep buying na kung anong nung stocks. Always stick to two to three stocks lang. Also, kapag bibili ka ng stock, dapat sa magkakaiba ng industries. Huwag yung two, two stocks mo na sa poor banking, poor banko. Kapag nagkaroon ng crisis sa banking industry, lahat ng stocks mo affected. Kasi ito yan. Ito yung mga different sectors, ibig sabihin industries, na pwede mo pag-investan. Okay? Also yun yan, na don't build your portfolio in the same industry. Dapat sa magkakaiba. Para if something happens in a certain industry, hindi affected yung buong stock portfolio mo. Also, yun nga na pag mas lumalago yung total investment mo, yung number of stocks mo din lalago. So, yung portfolio mo, lalago din. Step 5, sell at the right time. Dito, dito tayo gagamit ng technical, technical analysis. And for me, I use the basic of the technical analysis. That's when you sell, when it's too expensive already. Balik tayo doon kanina sa understanding the intrinsic value. Kapag sobrang taas na niya, that's, that's the best time to sell, okay? Also, yun nga, technical analysis will also help you when to sell. And ito yung basics na ginagamit ko, yung support and resistance. Support is actually the level or the price where the stock price should not go down. For example, ang stock, ang support is 50 pesos ni ABC stock. Dapat sa 50 pesos, hindi siya bumaba doon further. At opposite naman siya ng resistance. Okay? Also, add ko na din ang, ang technical analysis kasi not most of the time nasusunod siya kasi may mga bagay kasi nangyayari sa stock market na hindi natin in-expect kung bakit bumababa yung stock or tumatas. Sometimes what you call a black swan, don't just sell at 10% gain. Di porket nag 10% na yun, eh, ibebenta mo na. It is better to hold the stock is continue breaking the resistance. Ibig sabihin, yun nga, yung resistance, yung puwitigil sa kanya sa pagtaas, if the stock continues to break, it is better to hold until may magkaroon ng reversal na pag yung bumababa na siya ulit. That's when you actually sell. Okay? And then, step 6. So, and For example, kumita ka na, maka-exceed ka ng dividends. You need to reinvest. Again, this is a actually long-term investing. You need to reinvest your gains. Like what I said na, hindi porket ang duration natin is, or time allowance natin is 10 years, eh, kukumplita mo na nga. For example, sobrang mahal na nung binili mong stock, ang ganda ng position mo. So, dapat ibenta mo na na kahit kumita ka sa short term, hindi yung susundin mo yung 10 years na hindi, i-hold ko to, hindi. Pag ganun, ibenta mo na. Also, pag nag-reinvest ka sa'yo, you're sticking to your financial goal. You're step one. Reinvesting and having a long-term plan is the key to compound interest. I'll explain further for those who don't know yet. Ito yung example ng compound interest. Please mind na this is just a, an illustration. Hindi ito yung tunay na nangyayari sa stock market. But yun nga, the thing is with compound interest, yung interest mo, nag interest pa. So basically, if nag-invest ka lang in a investment vehicle na nag-compound ng 10% every year, on year one mo, kumita ka na ng 500. But on the eighth year mo, double na yung initial investment mo and still continue. Isipin mo, you started at 5,000 pesos but on the year 20, nasa 33,000 pesos na siya. That's actually how compound interest works. Sabi nga ni Albert Einstein, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. So bakit? He who doesn't understand compound interest, nagbabayad doon. For example, balik tayo dito. For example, hindi siya investment. Utang mo yan. Umutang ka sa credit card ng 5,000 pesos. At hindi mo siya binayaran for 20 years. Yung utang mong 5,000, on the 28th year, nasa 33,000 na siya. So, nagkapatong-patong. So, ganun. Kaya kung bakit may mga nababaon sa credit card debts ng napakabilis. Okay. Because it is because of compounded interest. The younger you start, the better your returns. Because time is your ally. Kasi the longer you invest, the better is return nga. Number seven, you need to stick to your plan. Okay? Yan. You need to invest intentionally. I mean, long-term investor ka because in the first place, long-term investor ka. Hindi yung stock trader ka na nagkamali ka. Hindi mo maibenta yung position mo. Kaya magla-long-term investing ka na lang waiting na tumaas siya in the long term. So, hindi ganun. Also, when you change your plan and strategy kasi, 
your financial goal will be affected. It may may happen na hindi mo siya ma-reach or ma-delay yung pag-reach mo dun. You need to focus on your journey. Do not compare yourself with other investors. Kasi ang mangyayari na madi-discourage ka, you'd think na it's not gonna work. But the thing is, if you understand what you're doing, if you know the stock that you're buying, you will get there. When you're investing, stop looking at your portfolio often. Kasi yun yung magkakos din sa'yo ng distraction. I think for me, you should look at your portfolio, I think, once a week or just get updated na lang sa mga nangyayari sa stock, sa stock market natin. On step eight, you need to be patient. Kasi along the way, madi-discourage ka. As I said, na you don't harvest on it na agad-agad yung kita. It doesn't happen most of the time. I understand na magiging patient din kayo because it also happens to me. So what should you do? Improve yourself increase your income and invest in your financial intelligence. So, dapat ba mag-invest ka na kagad? Of course, proper investing needs proper planning. Hindi yung porket may natuto ka na ng kaunti, eh, mag-start ka na. You need to understand what you're getting into kasi pera pa rin natin yung pinag-uusapan dito. Here are my tips on planning. Ito yung mag-prepare sa'yo sa pag-invest and hindi lang sa stock market. In any investment, okay? Number one, you need to study. Kasi if you understand what you're doing, if you know what you're actually doing, kahit anong crash, kahit anong shortcoming sa mangyayari sa'yo, you would use it to your advantage. Kagaya ngayon, stocks are down, stocks are cheap. I should be buying na stocks na magte-take advantage pa sa akin. And number two, you need to build your emergency fund first and have insurance or protection. And I think most of you naman are youth or not yet working. Actually, insurance is another topic. But anyway, I encourage you to build your emergency fund kasi yun yung, sa ngayon sa inyo, yun yung pinaka-importante. And step three, yun nga, you need to define your financial goal. Number four, set your time horizon. And number five, you need to understand your risk tolerance. Stock market ay, ano siya, aggressive siya. Stock market is actually for aggressive people na kayang itolerate yung volatility nga ng market. At also, meron namang investment for conservative and for moderate. Yun nga, dapat yung magmamatch yung goal mo sa yung risk tolerance mo. If hindi nagfi-fit yung risk tolerance mo, you should accept the risk especially if yung time mo naman is mahaba. You need to have a risk management plan. Kagaya pag nag-invest ka sa stock market, dapat ang time mo mahaba, ang pag-invest mo regular at saka maliliit lang, slowly lang, get into the market slowly and also buy good companies nga. It's one of the things how you can set your strategy. So you, these are the things you need to avoid in the stock market. Yung over diversifying nga. At saka ito, yung taking stock recommendations without studying. Hindi yung porket sinabi ng friend mo na bilhin mo to, eh bibili mo na. You need to have your own research and understanding the company. And speculations, ito naman yung mga hula, guessing. Kasi we will never know kung tataas ba ang market o bababa. Kasi yun nga, it happens na there's a lot of factors na nag-determine doon. And don't put all your money in the stock market. Okay? Ulit-ulit. <laughs> Pero also importante. And also, yung perang kailangan mo in the short term. Yung trend kasi ng market, minsan sumasabay yung emotions natin eh. So, pagpataas yung market, may kita mo dito sa first dot. Andiyan yung optimism. Yan, lahat ng investors masaya. Pag nasa top na, pababa na siya. Ang dami na natatakot. So, ngayon, nasa ano tayo? Nasa panic. So, what should you do? Actually, balik tayo mo lang. Kapag nandito ka, pag nandito tayo sa market, that's when you sell. That's, dyan ka dapat matakot. Get out na. Benta mo ng position mo. Kung okay, kung mababa na yung position mo at okay na yung gains mo, ibenta mo na. And dito tayo dapat nagiging greedy. That's when we buy. Kaya nga diba sabi ni Warren Buffett, be greedy when others are fearful or be fearful when others are greedy. Also, ito, yung gusto kong i-share sa inyo. Um, nakita ko lang tong content na sa Facebook or Twitter. And... Yan, kasi ito yung advantage mo when you're in your 20s. When, yung, pag yung, when you try to live simply, you choose to save and invest first. Kasi in the next decades, your money will work for you. Eh. And you will have more advantage than any other people who doesn't work under finances. Finances, ganun. Yan. Yun nga na, when you invest your money, your money is working for you. Ito yung dapat ma-achieve din natin, isa sa mga goal natin, na kung bakit natin pinag-aakalan to. For any questions, guys, um, please let me know. Also, um, just would like to share with you Invest Talk Philippines. Um, this is what I've created. Also, may mga content din kami dito sa investtalkph.com. And you may check their articles. 
and our vlogs in YouTube and here's our platform. <clears throat> any questions for you guys or any clarifications that I could answer more? From Ems, what is your insight about Dito? Um, actually, yung Dito kasi, it's projected as a... And guys, pwede nyo ding i-comment, i-chat dito kung niyakay magsalita. So anyway, about Dito, ano siya, actually a third telco company, pag-aari ni Dennis Uy. Actually, napapaisip din ako sa kanya, pero I would say no, kasi based on track record, eh, hindi ganun kag ganda sa akin. Hindi siya pasok sa personality, I mean, sa parameters ko. Um, yung two other telcos kasi, yung Globe at saka PLDT, sobrang sobrang mahal din nila. Tapos, nagaan na sila. Yung parang nagmamature yung company nila. Yung PLDT kasi, in the last five years, pabagsak yung earnings niya. So, it's not good to invest your money there. But Ooh. in telco, in, I mean, in dito, hindi kasi natin alam eh. Mahirap i-predict eh. Pero if you would like to try, I think, ano lang, don't put your so much money on there. Yun, yun lang yung for me. And, ano pa ba? Books, you, books to read. Uh, ano ba maganda? Actually, maganda yung mga libro ni Marvin Germo. If you know Marvin Germo, uh, he's actually a stock trader na sa seminar din. Yung mga books niya, yung stock market series, I mean, stock smart series, tsaka yung okay. ano ba yung mga binasa ko dun? Uh, yung kay Brother Bo, yung The Turtles Always Win, tsaka yung may made invest in the stock market. Yung kasi madaling intindihan. Yung kay Brother Bo, madaling intindihan. Uh, it is very good for beginners. Tapos, um, ayun, na uh, hindi siya ganun ka-technical. Okay? So, can you repeat again about PA ratio? Okay, PA ratio, it is actually the price or stock price divided by earnings per share of the company. So, ayun, pag mataas yung PA ratio, ibig sabihin, overvalued siya. So, if the PA ratio is 12 pesos, it means that you're spending 12 pesos just to earn 1 peso. So, ganun yun. Ganun din yung basa yun doon. Hmm. Ano pa ba? May mga questions pa ba? <clears throat> Sorry guys, medyo namamaos ako eh. <laughs> Another thing sa books to read, ano pa ba? Um, yung ano pa ba mga Rich dad, poor dad, pero yung more on financial, personal finance na kasi yun. Pero, also, and magandang gabi po, I'm kay Franz Joseph. Magandang gabi po, I'm a beginner inve beginning investor. I wonder po, how would you say to have over-diversified your position? So, ayun nga. As the next Actually, isa din yung sa mga pagkakamali kayo pag over-diversified. <clears throat> um, pag yung over-diversified yung position mo kasi, hindi mo na ma-maximize yung winning stocks mo. Hindi mo na ma-maximize yung earnings mo sa isang stock kasi parang nadi-divide yung total investment mo. Kagaya nga din sa, ek sa example ko kanina, di ba? Pag kung yung stock mo, dalawa lang, tas yung isa, nag-earn ng... 45%, tas yung isa, 15%, kumita ka pa rin ng 30%. Pero kung nagdagdag ka ng dalawa, tas nag-down yun ng 10% each, so minus 20% din. So 10% na lang. So ganun. Yun yung the thing is with over-diversifying na madidilute yung earnings mo. And from Chris Ramos, Sir, can you suggest investment tools or materials na pwedeng pagkakano na starting pa lang sa pag-invest? Ah, uh, yeah. Yung sa ano, um, tawag dito, ako kasi pag nag, ginagamit ko yung Investagrams, maganda yung Investagrams talaga, pag-check ng technicals tsaka ng fundamentals din. Also yung PSE Edge for fundamentals din. Kasi ang problema ko sa PSE Edge, sobrang bagal niya. 
at yung mga data na kailangan ko kasi nandun na dun sa Investagram. So, doon lang din siya ina-analyze. Also guys, nandito pala si Jet, oh, Jet Honda. He is a content contributor namin sa Investok. So, say hi. <laughs> From Sheila Maki. Tingnan mo yung Honda D. O oh, yan, tama yung sinabi ni ano, ni si Sheng to, si Sheng. Hi, Sheng. Tig, sabi niya sa dito, sa dito telecom, yun nga, tignan mo yung fundamentals. Kasi yun talaga yung foundation ng company, yung fundamentals. So, basically, fundamental analysis determines what you buy and technical analysis helps, determines when to buy and when to sell. Okay? So, most investors kasi masyadong heavily dependent sa fundamental analysis, which is maganda naman. Pero ako, for me kasi, gusto may halo pa rin ng technicals, nung trends, ganun. And from Docs, Sir, good evening po. How how we do put money to the stock market? Ah, okay. Um, what are the tools need nyo para mag-start? Okay, so you need a broker. Yung mga broker, it can be Call Financial, BPI Trade, BDO Nomura, um, madami, madaming broker. Um, for some of you students, alam ko, pwede rin kayong mag-apply sa Call Financial ng account ng walang TIN. Yung TIN kasi sa ano siya, yung sa BIR. Um, kailangan kasi yun, isa siya sa mga requirements. And from Karen, any website recommendation where we can see stock status of the companies with the last 10 years for easy access? Yung, yun nga, yung Investagrams din. Maganda siya. May kita nyo din yung track, yung track record ng company. Um, share ko na rin din sa inyo, guys. Um, normally kasi sa, sa economy natin na nagkakaroon ng crisis every 10 years on, on average. Before na itong COVID-19 crisis, the last crisis was actually in the 2008. Yung pinakita kong group sa inyo. Um, tapos after nun, around 2001 yata, yung the bubble.com, tapos 97. May kita nyo din doon yung stock na sobrang baba talaga. Pero if you look at the good companies, may kita nyo na bumaba talaga yung stock price nila. Pero after a few years, nakabawi sila. That way, it is important na yung binibili mong stock, eh, okay talaga. Na masasurvive yung crisis na hindi lang yung basta mawawala na lang na parang bula. Kung Rod and Jay, learn na lang, thank you. May the compound dito sa <laughs> appearing board exams next year. Yeah. Thank you din, Rod and Jason Scam. Ayan. Ito yung mga magandang books din. Trading. Yung trading code for traders din, more on technicals. From France. Gandang gabi yung... Ah, ano pa ba? Also, yun din yung... Add ko na rin pala din sa nagtanong about sa books. Yung The Intelligent Investor, yun din. Sabi nila, yun daw yung Bible ng mga investors. But, hindi ko pa kasi siya natatapos kasi makapal siya. Pero, yun nga. From, yan. From J. Roll Rante. Any good applications for monitoring company sector? Also, does your investment stocks get drained when the gaps goes down? Oo, totoo. Na yung position ko ngayon pula. At, um, totoo, medyo na, nakakaba. And the thing is that, kung ano man yung mangyari doon, kung mag man ako, the thing is, I'm not heavily affected kasi hindi naman lahat doon ng finance finances ko nandun. Um, yun nga, for applications sa, ng pag-monitor ng company, yung Investagrams. Um, yun. So, at from Nina Christina, at 200, at 200k capital, how many stocks would you recommend? Um, for 200, 2 to 3, actually, May mga nag advice kasi na pag 100k yung stocks mo, you should start with one stock. Pero yun nga, for me, yun yung parameters ko talaga, 2 to 3 stocks. And kung 200k yung capital mo, much better i-divide mo na lang siya. Like for example, 5,000 a month, i-invest mo. Para 
asking nga, yung 200 capital mo na pag invest mo, tapos biglang bumagsak lalo yung market natin ngayon, eh, mababattered down yun. Tapos, may hirap ang kapag average na makasabay sa pagbaba ng market. And yun. And you can also ask Jetro for anything. And Sheng, yan yung mga creator na mahilig din sa stock market. From Chris Ramos. What is the ideal fund allocation para di ka mapag-over-diversify ng portfolio mo? Actually, yung sa book ni Marvin Gare mo nga, uh, yung stress-free investings, ang ganda ng libro na yun. Kasi tinuro niya doon yung, yung balancing ng, ano mo, ng portfolio mo. Yung proper allocation nga. So, ang ginawa niya din doon na yung example niya doon, magkakaibang sectors na magkakaibang magkakaibang industries. Tapos, meron siyang defensive stocks. Tapos, meron siyang growth stocks din. So, yung growth stocks, ito yung mga mabibilis kumita na companies na sobrang profitable talaga. Yung defensive stocks, yung mga stock na kahit bumaba ang market, hindi sila sobrang baba, kagaya nung Aboytis Power na yun yung mga, yung business kasi noon about pag-generate ng energy ng power. So, yun yung mga basic needs na pinoprovide nila. Kagaya ng mga so, ano din, consumer, ganun. So, paano may ano yun, i-balance? If you have two stocks, much better is 50-50 na lang. Or kung, kung mas malaki yung capital mo, nag-start ka with five stocks, much better na equal sila sa allocation kung ilang percent. Yan. From Karen, when you invest po ba sa stock as a beginner, is there any range of amount money on how much money you should invest? Yeah, kasi nung nag-start ako mag-invest, uh, nagkaka-start ko lang din sa trabaho nun, last more than three years ago, uh, nag-start ako with 20% ng salary ko. So, mababa na yung salary ko nun, first job ko yun. At, yun, na hindi ako, so hindi ko inumpisaan siya ng malaking capital agad. So, nag talaga sa mababa, ng paunti-unti, hanggang sa nung lumaki na yung sahod ko, sumabay din yung pag-invest ko na mas malaki na rin. And then, yung sa 8K rule kasi, from Diana, from Diane Angelic. Yung sa 8K rule, actually, um, for me, hindi ko siya ganong sinusunod based on personal experience, based on personal opinion. Sa article kasi nabasa ko, mas makakatipid ka kapag sinunod mo yung 8K rule. Ibig sabihin, pag bibili ka or magbebenta ng stock, dapat nasa 8K rule siya. Hindi siya bababa ng 8K. Kasi lugi ka daw sa fees. Pero for me kasi, pag mas malaki yung ini-invest mo, mas malaki yung charges, yun yung napansin ko ah. Mas malaki yung charges compare sa mas mababa sa 8K. Mas, and mas malaki yung fees. So, I think much applicable siya sa mga trader na yun nga, na trade sa market. From James, Would you recommend trading stocks as a full-time job or it is better to do stocks in your free time? And if ever, I want to focus on trading stock in the future. What subject course would you recommend to take? Okay. Actually, pag, eto ah, guys. When it comes to trading, um, maganda talaga siya na if you understand what you are doing, okay? Pero the thing is that, kailangan mo na malaking, kailangan mo na malaking capital. Okay? Kasi, eto ah, for example, 100,000 yung, I mean, I mean wag 100,000. 10,000 yung capital mo. So, lahat yun binuwas mo sa isang stock. And then, tumaas nga ng 10%. Yung 10% na yun, nasa 1,000 lang yun ng 10,000. So, parang hindi, kung you're doing it for a living, tapos kumikita ka lang ng bawat trade mo, 1,000. Tapos, ayun nga, na, di ba parang hindi naman siya sulit. So, much better na you have bigger capital to start. Tsaka, yung napapansin ko din kasi sa mga nagtitrade, ah, uh, Ang capital nila at least 150. Yan. Kasi yung, if you know, Gul, nakalimutan ko yung name niya, yung founder ng Traders Empire, na yung capital niya, it, I think nasa 150, tas umangat lang ng around 5% binenta niya na, kasi kumita na siya doon ng 12,000. So kung gusto mo talaga maximize yung profits, profits mo, much better na mas malaki yung capital mo. And kung gusto mo talaga siyang a full-time job, much better na mag-train ka talaga. Actually, I don't know kung yung what exact books, kung ano yung nila. Pero, I think, 
yung Kailum Trading Institute na nagtuturo talaga yung nagtuturo talaga sila for stock trading for technical analysis. Yung ate ko trader siya. So magkaiba kami investor at trader siya. At siya heavily dependent talaga siya sa price movement, sa price action. Ako kasi wala akong ganung pakialam doon eh na kung tumaas man or bumaba as long as na okay yung fundamentals. From Franz Joseph sa Salo- sa Lukop. Uh, also, sir, would you like to ask your your opinion about index funds? Index funds is good for beginners who want to start already. Kung meron kayong pang start na, meron na kayong capital, at gusto nyo na mag-invest, mutual fund is good, okay? Also, may content ako sa Facebook ng, about sa mutual fund, ng ver, ano yan, stock market versus mutual fund. So, mas, mas maintindan nyo siya when you... Pag napanood nyo yun, and yun. Yan, sabi din, yan nga, sabi ni Mark Diaz Santa, H.E. Rolson din, if trader. Okay. Uh, yan. Ayan, si Sheng. Yan talaga, marunong, magaling yan. Madaming alam yun sa trading kasi yun talaga yung pinapractice niya. And what I'm sharing to you guys, kung yung, yan, kung yung pinapractice ko. And last question from Janiel Janer. Hi, sir. Do you think it is good to invest in the airline sector during or after the pandemic. I don't know. <laughs> uh, for me, actually, meron akong ano, meron akong position sa Cebu Pacific at kinakabahan din ako. Inisip ko kung magkakatlos na ba ako. And the thing is, nung pa-checking its fundamentals, medyo no, may changes nga, pero hindi ganun kalala compare sa, sa Philippine Airlines. I think, wag muna, wag muna sa airline. Kung hindi mo kayang i-take yung, pumula yung portfolio mo, um, don't invest in airlines. Stay away muna. Until, actually, we will never know kung kailan babalik sa dati or kung babalik pa ba or new normal. Yun nga, may tatawag kasi sila na new normal. I think, ano, it takes time talaga to recover kasi sila yung nga yung most hit. Tapos, yung, yun nga, yung mga pilots, um, they earn so much money pero ngayon sobrang affected sila. Masasuggest ko, Janelle, um, look for other stocks na <clears throat> Look for other stocks na sobrang nag-grow ngayon. For example, yung Zoom. Yung, eto, ngayon, yung Zoom. Sobrang, ano siya, nag-boom siya kasi ang daming gumamit. Tapos, yung net worth ng founder, umangat ng 112%. At kasi, ano, kasi yun nga, lahat ng tao nasa bahay, lahat ng tao, yung nag-work from home, so gumagamit ng video conferencing software. So ayun, ko kanin yung kagaya na lang ano pa ba yung mga stock na ano na hindi ga anong affected sa pandemic yung mara, et, ano pa ba? Um yung actually for me yung Aboitis, medyo bumaba siya pero yun nga actually it's also kasi defensive stock then. From current stock trading or investing, which is better? Um it's up to you actually there's no better or greater or ganun. Kung sinong walang nakakangat or walang nakakalamang. Nasa investor or trader yan. Okay? Kasi, for me, I choose investing kasi yun yung fit sa akin. Di, di kasi ako yung masyadong ano, matutok from day to day sa stock market. Actually, tumitingin na lang ako sa stock kapag yung position ko masyado nang mataas. I, I mean, pag yung position ko, tapos mas mataas na yung stock price. Yung tipong nag-aabang na lang ako kailan ako bumenta. Yung ganun, doon na lang ako nag, ano, babantay. And yun nga, depende din sa financial goal mo. So, yun. And any questions? Any questions, guys? <clears throat> wow. Thank you, bestie. <laughs> Alright. So, I think that's it. Thank you guys for having me here, for joining our free webinar. Sana may napag-share kami ng value sa inyo at um, napag may natutunan kayo. Okay. Yan, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Search nyo lang InvestTalkPH. Yan. Thank you guys. And check nyo na rin website namin, InvestTalkPH.com Also, you can add me guys sa, ano, sa Facebook field accept ko kayo and uh, yun, for any questions there kung may maisip pa kayo. Ay, from Doc, last question. Sige Doc, go ahead. Sorry guys, medyo namamauso ko. <laughs> Anong question mo Doc? Docs. 
Um, Doc, sir, advisable po ba kumuha ng midman? What do you mean midman? Na yung magte-trade para sa iyo or mag invest para sa iyo? For me no. No, no, never, never. Kasi ito ah, pagkukuha ka ng midman, yung pera mo pinapaubayan mo sa kanya. Okay? Yung pakialam mo doon sa pera na yun, hindi kasi yung level ng pakialam niya doon sa pera na yun. Kasi pera mo yun eh, di ba? Pinagyarapan mo yun. So, kung kumita man siya o kumita man yun o hindi, for me, it is not a good idea. Kasi iba nga yung pag-handle mo sa pera mo kaysa sa pera ng ibang tao. Mag, lalo na magte-trade. Kasi guys, you need to understand, in trading, hindi yan puro kita. Hindi yan na puro earnings lang ganun. Kasi sa trading... Kung hindi maganda yung naging kinalabasan ng, ng trade mo, that's when you cut loss. Okay? That's good yung question. <laughs> Any question pa, guys? Alright. I'll stop sharing screen now. Guys, thank you for thank you for joining us. And again, feel free to connect. Okay? Bye.